looks like it's happening again. Not even a year after the failure of Silicon Valley, Signature, and First Republic Bank, another storm seems to be brewing. And no, I'm not talking about the insane amount of rain that California just received. Instead, it's the newest banking crisis that every single major headline seems to be talking about. And just like 2008, it all has to do with real estate. Graham Stephan, a real estate and finance maestro, stands as a testament to what strategic foresight and savvy investing can achieve. With a portfolio that whispers tales of success, Stefan's journey through rent, mortgage returns, and property appreciation has been lucrative and enlightening, netting an average of $270,000 per year from his real estate investments. It's a narrative that showcases his financial acumen and paves the way for a deeper exploration into achieving financial stability. Now, in a world where financial stability seems like a distant dream for many, Imagine living a life where debt doesn't loom over your every decision. Picture yourself not just scraping by but thriving, free from the shackles of financial worries, achieving your dreams, and setting a solid foundation for your future. You know what could make this dream a reality, even amidst economic uncertainty? Taking smart, proactive steps before a banking meltdown. So, how can you position yourself to not just survive but thrive, even when the banks are trembling? Imagine securing your financial future, no matter the economic climate. Stick around because we're diving deep into the strategies that could be your financial lifeline. Fractional Reserve Banking Let's kick things off with a quick dive into the banking world, making it as simple as a cup of coffee with Graham Stephan. Imagine banks playing a game of financial hot potato with your $1,000 deposit. They only have to keep a tiny slice, say $100 on hand, while the rest is out there doing the rounds. $900 becomes $810 for someone else, and the cycle continues. This system, known as fractional reserve banking, is the lifeblood of our financial institutions, allowing them to lend out money and invest while offering us a piece of the pie in the form of interest. It's a trust game, with everyone hoping the music doesn't stop and everyone asks for their money back at the same time. But then, Graham Stephan throws a curveball our way with a little history lesson from 2020 and 2021. Picture the world hitting the pause button, with interest rates plummeting to zero to keep the economic gears grinding. Suddenly, banks are like those arcade grabber machines, hoarding all the money people are borrowing because, well, it's practically free. Usually banks would use this money to play it safe, investing in things like US treasuries, expecting to turn a small profit, but with low rates, these safe bets started to look a bit shaky, especially when the Fed decided it was time to turn up the heat and raise rates, causing the value of these safe investments to tumble. Here's where the plot thickens. Smaller banks, in particular, found themselves in a sticky situation. Imagine everyone withdrawing their money simultaneously. A banking version of musical chairs where suddenly there aren't enough chairs to go around. This led to a liquidity crisis a fancy term for not enough cash to go around, culminating in the collapse of three banks. Commercial real estate crisis. Fast forward to today, and we find ourselves in a similar, yet distinct, financial drama, with commercial real estate taking center stage. Picture banks, once again, have found themselves caught in a financial bind. But this time, the culprit is commercial real estate an asset class that's been hit hard by the rapid increase in interest rates. During an era when safe investments like US Treasuries offered returns that barely moved the needle, commercial real estate emerged as the darling of the investment world. Why? Simply because borrowing was cheap, and the returns, by comparison, were enticing. Banks, flush with cash and eager to lend, poured money into commercial properties, driving values up by as much as 30%. However, as Graham Stephan points out, the plot thickens with the fastest pace of interest rate hikes in history. Suddenly, the booming commercial real estate market faces a downturn reminiscent of the 2008 financial crisis, with estimates suggesting a potential 40% drop in market value. This is particularly concerning because US banks, especially the smaller regional ones, are deeply invested in commercial real estate loans, totaling about $2.7 trillion. These aren't your typical 30-year fixed mortgages, but loans with interest rates that reset after just a few years, creating a ticking time bomb set to detonate as these rates surge. The impact of rising interest rates on commercial real estate is stark, 
Take for example, a building that generates a 6% return on a $1 million investment. In a low interest environment, its value could skyrocket, but as interest rates climb, the value plummets, fundamentally altering the calculus for investors. Banks, particularly regional ones not deemed too big to fail, find themselves in a precarious position. They're not just lenders in this scenario. They're also stakeholders in a market where the value of their investments is directly tied to the volatile interplay of earning potential and borrowing costs. A banking meltdown. Now, Graham Stephan has been shining a spotlight on a brewing storm in the banking sector, and it's a narrative that could rival any financial thriller. Let's say New York Community Bank suddenly finds itself $552 million in the hole thanks to some sour bets on commercial real estate. Across the pond, Deutsche Bank is scrambling, stashing away $133 million to weather potential defaults on its U.S. commercial real estate portfolio, a sky-high figure compared to last year's provisions. This isn't just a few bad loans, it's a potential pandemic of financial distress that could spread through the market like wildfire. Distressed property sales could drag down values across the board, setting off a chain reaction of falling prices and a valuation nosedive. Enter Jerome Powell, the financial world's doctor on call, diagnosing smaller regional banks with a severe case of exposure to these shaky assets. Powell's prognosis? We're in for a long treatment plan, grappling with a problem of significant scale. And the epicenter of this financial quake? The office space market is now haunted by a ghost town vibe with a staggering 19.6% vacancy rate, the likes of which we haven't seen since bell bottoms were in fashion. The Atlantic, ever the harbinger, had already flagged empty office buildings as the starting gun for the next crisis. With a tidal wave of office leases expiring by 2026, we're staring down the barrel of a gun loaded with higher vacancies and plummeting rents. To add insult to injury, a quarter of office building loans are due for renewal next year, just as interest rates have decided to take a rocket to the moon, multiplying ownership costs. But here's the kicker, as Graham Stephan would lay it out. A staggering portion of commercial real estate loans, especially those tied to office buildings, are now underwater. That means the money owed on these properties has eclipsed their worth, ramping up the risk of defaults. These defaults aren't just numbers on a page, they're potential death sentences for the smaller banks that might find themselves unable to shoulder the losses. Financial Foresight Let's dive into the heart of the matter, folks. We're on a roller coaster through the banking and real estate worlds, and the big question on everyone's mind is, should we be losing sleep over this? Well, let's break it down with a dose of reality mixed with a sprinkle of optimism. You see, we're faced with a scenario brewing concern, a potential spike in inflation leading the Federal Reserve to hike up interest rates, nudging us toward a recession. It's a situation where borrowers could find themselves in a bind, struggling with their loan payments. But, according to Graham Stephan, channeling insights from Jerome Powell, there's a manageable side to this storm. Despite the looming challenges, there's a foundation of strength with a robust economy, a vibrant job market, and an easing inflation. It's not about having a crystal ball, but a sense of cautious optimism is in the air. Graham highlights an interesting twist in the tale of the real estate market. Not all sectors are bracing for impact. In fact, some are thriving against the odds. Warehouses, retail spaces, and hotels are enjoying a moment of prosperity, with vacancy rates and revenues defying expectations. A significant portion of commercial real estate debt is still performing well enough to meet the bank's refinancing standards, with delinquency rates barely nudging above prepandemic levels. Yet, Graham points out, the office space sector remains the exception, navigating through Rauger Seas. Echoing concerns from JP Morgan, there's an anticipation of challenges ahead for office loans. This ripple effect suggests banks might tighten their lending practices, becoming more selective about who they lend to. This, Graham notes, could potentially impact your next big financial move, whether it's buying a house or a car or taking on any significant financial commitment. Now, Graham Stephan drops a real gem for those eyeing the real estate market right now. Patience is key. In today's market, it's wise to move slowly make those lowball offers, and really think about whether a property is a good fit for the long haul. Graham's in the camp that believes real estate is still ripe with opportunities, especially if you land a sweet deal. But let's not sugarcoat it. The banking scene is getting tighter, 
and snagging alone might just become a Herculean task. Now, a little history lesson might be in order for those with their savings cozied up in regional banks. Remember the financial hiccups that shook the banking world not too long ago? Well, thanks to the safety net of FDIC insurance, depositors didn't lose a wink of sleep over their funds. The investors took the real hit, a common risk across the board when you're playing the stock market game. So, you're likely sitting pretty unless you're keeping a treasure chest of over $250,000 in a regional bank. And even if you are, FDIC insurance is there to catch you, ensuring a soft landing for everyone involved. But here's where it gets interesting with New York Community Bank. Despite analysts at Bank of America signaling no weird vibes with deposit activity, the bank's share price is on a bit of a roller coaster ride, leaving investors scratching their heads over its future. And finally, Stefan reminds us of the importance of seeking professional financial advice. The financial landscape, especially concerning banks and real estate, is fraught with uncertainties and risks. Being well informed and cautious is crucial for navigating these challenges successfully ensuring one's financial stability remains intact in the face of potential banking crises. As we wrap up, how will you choose to adapt and thrive in a world where financial landscapes can shift overnight? Will you be the architect of your financial resilience, ready to face whatever comes next with confidence and a plan? Comment down below. We'd love to know. Thanks for tuning in to After the 925. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on financial freedom, smart investments, and profitable side hustles.